five minute call. This is your five minute call with Cecily Stovall. Hey, what's up, you guys? This is your five minute call with Cecily Stovall. Welcome to season three. Our premiere could not be bigger. I am so excited to announce today we have Beth Malone on the line. Her top five are as follows. Number one, she is originally from Castle Rock, Colorado. Number two, she went to UC Irvine for grad school. Number three, as we all know, she was recently nominated for Best Actress in a Musical for Fun Home. Congratulations. Um, so she's obviously in Fun Home right now on Broadway. Go see it. Uh, number four, this is not her first Broadway show. She also did Ring of Fire. And uh, she was one of the original marvelous women in the Wonders Marvelettes. And she also did the original sister act long, long before it even went to London. That's kind of crazy. And uh, number five, this ranch raised lady likes to rehab RVs. <laughs> Welcome. How's it going? Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Um, so question one for you is tell us all a little bit about your journey from high school, like through college, grad school to now. Well, I mean, as far as um, high school goes, uh, I went to just a public high school where it, it had a very strong theater department and it really was a pivotal moment in my development. Like I had no idea where I would be today if, if that theater department didn't exist. I went to um, an undergraduate right out of high school that was like this conservatory type thing. And so um, I thought it was all going to be gravy and I was going to be some, I don't know what was going to happen because I didn't really have a, like I didn't have a trajectory like early on. I, didn't, I just thought, I, I had no idea what was going to happen. I thought someone was going to pluck me out of the sky and make me a star, I think, probably. <laughs> um, so, but that didn't happen. So um, I really, you, you know, my, my undergraduate closed and then I went on the road with this rock band because I, that's what you do. And, uh, you know, I just started like meandering and then I started taking jobs and I got my equity card really young and, and you know, by the time I was like 19, I had my equity card and I was working in this regional theater that was in Castle Rock, I mean, in Denver, Colorado. And, uh, and then I, I had this, like, like my gayness was a thing that I hadn't dealt with yet. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I moved to New York, I tried, um, you know, I tried the waiting on line at seven in the morning for the EPAs and stuff like that. And then I met my, my current wife, like all those many, many years ago. And then uh, moved up to the mountains with her for like three years while we just sort of cocooned ourselves in our burgeoning love and, and uh, you know, just said to hell with the rest of the world and to hell with my career. And I'm just going to be a singing waitress here. So, what was the moment for you that you knew this was definitely what you wanted to do or go back to or when you wanted to stop being a singing waitress? Well, you know, it's funny, like performing at that restaurant, being a singing waitress, taught me a whole other skill set. Night after night after night, honing like, like minutiae communication skills on a very intimate level. You cannot lie when you're that close to people. Right. And I'm, I'm using those skills even to tonight in Fun Home. I'm using those because when you feel a human being breathing right here and that is the fourth wall right there, you cannot do anything false. It was part of my overall training, you know. Right. And then that's when you decided... What was the original question? I don't know. I had some coffee. <laughs> when did um, you decide to do this? No, I never could do anything else. I could never do anything else. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't feel like I decided to not do it. But I do remember there was that moment where I was like, i got to get out of this town. So what's the most memorable moment you've had in your career? Well, I have to say, Fun Home is really, like, I am living this crazy um, you know, fantasy life right now. But this whole year has been amazing. Like, I, okay, here's something that happened that we didn't talk about before this. Okay. Uh, I walked into an audition that I talked myself into for the Unsinkable Molly Brown, the revival. Uh -huh. um, by Dick Scanlon, directed by Kathleen Marshall. I walked into it. I had to call my agents and say, this is last year, I said, I really want to be seen for this. And I'm like, okay. And, and even Dick Scanlon, who is Jimmy Nintasaurus' really good friend, was like, I don't understand why does she want to be seen for this so bad 
okay, if she feels strongly about it, of course we'll see her, you know, but in these, all of these like apologetic ways, like whatever. <laughs> and then I knew that I had this character in my real house because I mean, I play these scrappy leading ladies, these vintage shows, and I know how to muscle them into life. You know, that's my skill set of like, you know, being a lesbian sometimes has a lot of um, advantages because I'm really athletic and scrappy. And, um, you know, I'm also like sort of um, irreverent. So I walked in there and I was like, I had an idea of how to do it. And, and this audition was one of the moments in my life where I will never forget. Like, I could feel, I could sense behind the table their polite doubt. I could sense the um, possibility in the air. I could sense all of it. And I gave my um, music to the lovely guy behind the piano. And, I, and it wasn't Michael Rafter. Michael was behind the table. And I had written down the words on to ain't down yet on a piece of paper mm -hmm. because I, I was, I was just learning it. And, um, the, the beginning is tricky and the end and somewhere in the middle of it, it kicks into just like the anthem. Everybody knows I'm going to learn to read and write and it kicks into that. And, um, so once I got through the part where I knew it, Dick says I crumpled up the paper and chucked it across the room and just kept singing that song, you know? And um, I don't really remember doing it. It was sort of an out-of-body thing, but I was just like in it, you know? And I was like, because I ain't down yet is about a chick who ain't down yet. You know right. what I mean? She is, you know, she is, um, she's at the end of her rope. So um, I got that job. That's a great segue for our question four. Um, e Huffs on Twitter wants to know um, a little bit about your journey. You've been um, in all of these great, amazing regional shows. You did Ring of Fire, and now you're in Fun Home. And people could say that it's a little bit late in your career that you're getting all of the recognition for this amazing role. How do you feel, or what would you say about the journey of your career and finding so much success so late? from your 19 year old equity card day. It, you know, your career is long and it doesn't go, it doesn't go like this. Careers don't go like this. And in my dressing room is Judy Kuhn. Now Judy Kuhn is an amazingly successful musical theater person, right? Mm -hmm. And she's had a huge career. Her career, she always talks about it, how careers go like this, careers go like this. They don't, they don't often just keep going like that. Yeah. So, um, for me, like Ring of Fire happened, and I was kind of this hot topic here in New York for a season, right on the heels of going back to LA after Ring of Fire. I booked Sister Act, and I booked um, Sister Mary Robert in it. And, uh, and when I did it, Life I Never Led ended with this enormous, soaring, gorgeous, like hold it as long as you can note while the deck is just vibrating because the timpanis are going in this like amazing element and you know like psh, on the rock you know sort of in a mermaid way right <laughs> so it literally was one of the other high points in my career getting to you know we took to Atlanta and Pasadena Playhouse and so I thought oh, I'm gonna get that job you know when that goes on and then and then by the time it went um the girl who got my part was 20 years younger than me. It wasn't like five or 10, 20 years younger than me. And I was like, oh, oh okay. I can, you know, I can get behind that. So if you could go back in time and give your 16 year old self one piece of advice, what would it be? Well, strike while the iron's hot. There have been so many times I had heat and I ran away from it. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, think it's going to come back because sometimes I had been so hot, like right after grad school, we, we came in at a showcase and I had so many meetings and so many things. And I was like, Oh, I'll call you when I get back to town. And I don't know what I was thinking. Sometimes your life is only uh, to be used as an example to others. And that might be me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a great example if that's the case uh -huh. for sure. Thank you so much for joining us on Five Minute Call. Yeah. And I know you have shows tonight and it's a long weekend for you, but the best of luck with the run of the show. I am so excited to go and see it. Everybody should be going to see it if you haven't already. Yeah. Yeah. And um, have a great day. Nice to meet you. I'll see you in person someday. All right. Sounds good. Bye. <laughs>
successfully from five minute call. Make sure you click on the subscribe button to follow our new channel. Thanks for watching.